we need to talk about the concept of the electric field. The electric field. Now, you have familiarity with fields already. You are familiar with the concept of a gravitational field. So I'm going to draw, draw relationships between the gravitational field and the electric field as we go through. In order to talk about the electric field, you need to realize that the electric force is a field force. Just like the force of gravity, the electric force is a field force. In other words, it's a force that acts without touching. The two quarks are not touching one another, and yet there is a force of attraction that exists between the two of them. Just like the force of gravity, the Earth is pulling on you, even if you are not touching the Earth. The electric field is defined by a small positive test charge. In other words, if we take a large, positively charged sphere, we'll just set it up. It looks like this. We want to figure out the electric field that exists around that positively charged sphere. <laughs> so what we do is we take a small positive test charge, and we say, OK, if we were to put a small positive test charge right there, what would be the direction of the electric force? on that small positive test charge due to this larger charge here. Please take a moment and point with your finger in the direction of the force on that small positive test charge. Okay. Going all the way back to the law of charges, right? Like charges repel. So it's going to be repel in this direction. What if I were to place a positive charge right here, class? Please point in the direction of the force felt by that, right? The force is going to be up. And we can continue to do that, and we would get an, a field that looks like this. So the electric field is basically the direction that a po small positive test charge would feel a force. And if you look in the text on page, um, where is it? Two, I don't have the page. Hmm. 262. Oh, there's 248. I'm sorry, 648. I was off by a factor. 648, you can see this, which is the electric field that exists around a positive charge. Okay. We can also look at a, a gravitational field that you are more familiar with. Well, actually, before we do that, let's look at the negative. Notice, if we were to change this charge to a negative charge, the electric field that exists around it would actually all just be oriented toward the negative charge. Because again, going back to the law of charges, uh, uh, unlike charges attract. If we were to take a small positive test charge right there, it would be pulled toward the negatively charged object. You are familiar with this gravitational field, the Earth. There is a gravitational field that exists around the Earth it's constant, you know its value, 9.8 meters per second squared, gravitational field. We can draw a parallel to having two parallel plates, one that is positively charged, one that is negatively charged. And we take a small positive test charge, we place it right here. What happens to that small positive test charge for us? It gets attracted down to the negative. Not only that, it's going to be repelled from the positive plate, right? So it's going to go in this direction. It turns out that this is going to create a constant electric field, much like the constant gravitational field that exists here on planet Earth. So when we look at it, we can take this moose that I got for Christmas in my stocking. And right now, I'm in this gravitational field. When I take this object and I let go of it, class, what's going to happen to it? It's going to fall. You're familiar with this. This is a gravitational field. You've worked with it all your lives. Okay. If instead we talk about an electric field. Now, I'm going to set up an electric field that looks exactly like that. Let's see there's a pretend electric field right here. Two parallel plates of electric field going straight down. Now I'm going to take a positive charge. I'm going to hold it right here, and I'm going to let go of it. Class, what's going to happen to it? It's going to go down. It's going to accelerate downward. It's going to go in the direction of the electric field, just like the moose, which has mass, going in the direction of the gravitational field. Now, it gets a little bit tricky in that we can also talk about having negative charges. So what happens if I take my negative charge and I let go of it right here in an electric field, which is a constant electric field, which is pointed down? What's going to happen to the negative charge? It goes it's going to accelerate upward. Watch. I can't do it, right? Because it's not. It's actually an object with mass in a gravitational field. 
But notice, there is a major difference between an electric field and a gravitational field. In a gravitational field, you can only have positive mass. You cannot have negative mass. But in an electric field, you can have negative charge. And in a negative, a negative charge will experience a force in the opposite direction of the electric field. All right. Now, let's take a look at the Earth only farther away. If we orient ourselves instead of right next to the Earth, far away from the Earth, as if we are a satellite looking out at the Earth, notice that the gravitational field for the Earth is going to look like this. This is its gravitational field. Notice it's just like the electric field that surrounds a negative charge. Now, we need to define the electric field with specifics. The electric field is equal to the electric force per unit charge. And that is a boxed equation. The electric field equals the electric force per unit charge. Note the similarity. If we take the force of gravity, that's equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity. If I solve for the acceleration due to gravity, that's equal to the force of gravity per unit mass. Note the relationship between those two equations. We have the acceleration due to gravity instead of the electric field. We have mass instead of charge, and we have the force of gravity instead of the electric force. Again, you are very familiar with these equations, with the whole way this is set up. The dimensions on the electric field, George, force is in? Newtons. Divided by charge? Coulombs. Coulombs. So we have the electric field in newtons per coulomb. We can combine the two equations we have. The electric field is equal to the electric force per unit charge. Well, that's equal to 1 over Q times K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Just substituting in the equation we have for a point particle. The charge, doesn't matter which one, we can cancel one of them, and the electric field is equal to KQ over R squared, where this is the electric field around a point charge or a spherical charge. In other words, this equation is the description of that electric field. This right here describes what we're visually seeing right here. The last thing you need to know about electric fields is that they are vectors. Vector. Give me another 20 seconds. A vector for us means has both magnitude and direction. Just like a force. In other words, we're going to have to draw electric field diagrams. Some of the electric field. That's what we're starting next time. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.